Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. I'm on my Tokyo Japan rooftop balcony as always and I am together with my C-Star S50 smart telescope from ZW. It's a very good smart telescope that I featured on the channel before. I do have tons of videos on, on this uh, little thing there so I'll put links down in the description if you're not familiar with the telescope. I also have links to the specs and the, the page where you can buy the telescope as well if you're interested. Suffice it to say, it is a budget smart telescope that is absolutely excellent, especially for its price. But today we're using it in a very weird manner because you may have noticed it is completely slanted, oriented weirdly, whereas normally you'd expect it to just be like plopped onto a tripod. I have this weird wedge going on there. What is happening here? And what is happening is that I am using this little smart telescope in a mode that is called equatorial mode. And by default, if you're using the C-Star S50 or some other telescopes as well, the telescopes are set up so they can move like horizontally. They can rotate left and right horizontally, and it can also uh, move up and down vertically, right? And using those two axes of rotation, they can find the stars and then keep track of it. So that's all great and good. You can track your star and your target throughout the night. The problem is the target will actually rotate in your field of view. It's not very intuitive to actually understand that, but just think about the constellation Cassiopeia. If you look at the constellation Cassiopeia in the evening after the sun has set and also in the morning, before the sun rises, you'll see that at one point, it's a W, and at the other point, it's an M. It has rotated because it's simply rotated around the axis of rotation of the Earth. And so just from our eyes point of view, we had field rotation, what is called field rotation. The object rotated in our field of view. If I were to look at Cassiopeia throughout the night and just keep looking at it throughout the night, I would see it slowly rotating from a W to an M. And for the same reason, we have this issue with telescopes that are installed to rotate like horizontally and vertically only. This causes issues because if you're tracking throughout the night, the center of your field of view will not rotate at all, but the sides will, and you will need to crop your image out quite a lot in order to basically ignore the effects of that field rotation. And the way to fix this is to set it up so that the telescope can actually rotate in exactly the same way as the Earth rotates. And to do that, it's actually fairly simple. We look at the Earth's rotation axis and we make the telescope parallel to the Earth's rotation axis so that the telescope can rotate together with the Earth or actually against the Earth to keep track of objects. It's a fascinating concept and we have it set up like that here. So how do you do that with your own C-Star S50 so you can completely avoid field rotation? Well, the first thing you need to do is you want to align the telescope so that its axis of rotation is parallel to the Earth's axis of rotation. And for that, you need to be able to incline it like I have here. This smart telescope is... I think three kilograms, something like that. So it's not something you can do very easily with a standard tripod. And so because of that, you will very likely need a wedge like I have here. This wedge is actually a star tracker in this case, which is completely turned off. I'm not using it. I'm just using it as a wedge. And it's just like two slabs of plastic with a hinge that I can move so that it, it orients the telescope in the, uh, in the right direction. Uh, you also have wedges that can be bought online, like on Amazon, for instance, or from some astro providers from the brand Skywatcher. Those are like the cheapest uh, wedges. They're made for their star tracker, but uh, they can work with the C-Star S50 as well. And that's what most people are going with. So I'll put links in the uh, description for that as well. But yeah, so you want to be ready. You want to have a tripod. You want to have a wedge to be able to orient the telescope, and then you want to be able to mount the telescope on the wedge. Then you should be ready to actually point it towards the celestial pole for your hemisphere. Now, one little trick, by the way, is I'm using a very short tripod. I'm actually using the tripod that comes with the Sea Star. So it is prone to actually tilting and falling off. So ideally, you want to make sure that when the telescope is like hanging, pointing towards the celestial pole, underneath it, it has like one of the legs of the tripod. If you have a leg that is actually effectively pointing north, if you're in the northern hemisphere, or pointing south, if you're in the southern hemisphere, it reduces the risk of 
everything like tipping over, how do you actually align the telescope? So I'm going to talk about the Northern Hemisphere because that's the easiest. That's where I'm in. And I'm really sorry about you Southern Hemisphere guys. You'll have to look it up on your own. But basically, you want to find the star uh, Polaris in the Northern Hemisphere and orient the telescope to it. So first, let's talk about how you can find the star Polaris. For that, you'll see me standing next to another smart telescope because I'm reusing part of the video. Don't worry about that. It's exactly the same thing. So let's have a look. In the Northern Hemisphere, you can simply uh, find the star called Polaris, which is towards the north. The easiest way to do that is to start with a compass. Um, look where the north is located on your compass. And you can look at uh, an angle in the sky roughly equal to your latitude. So I'm at 36 degrees roughly latitude. So for me, Polaris will be towards the north at an angle compared to the horizon of 36 degrees. If uh, you're in Paris, I think it's around 46, 7, I don't quite remember. Uh, and you'll have to follow this, uh, this latitude. So it's fairly uh, straightforward. But in uh, very light polluted cities like here in Tokyo, Polaris can be very faint actually compared to the sky background and hard, and hard to find. So in that case, my favorite solution is to use the constellation of the Big Dipper, which is usually quite visible. And there are two uh, stars in the square that it makes uh, called Merak and Dube. You can follow the line that they make all the way to Polaris. So it's fairly easy then to find it. Okay, and now we know how to find Polaris. Now that we know how to find Polaris, we need to actually align the telescope to it. And there are many ways you can do that. I've seen a lot of people that take the telescope and on the side of the telescope here, they put a red dot finder that they have available from another telescope. And then they use this red dot finder to move the telescope towards Polaris. We can also use something different. For me, I can use a straw and I can roughly put the straw in the direction that the, uh, the telescope is pointing and put it there with a, a bit of tape. And then I can just sight Polaris through the straw and that's gonna be enough. So when you're doing the alignment, the objective is to have the body of the telescope. You don't even want to be using the lens of the telescope or anything. Just like it's turned off. You don't really care about the scope itself. You just want to have the body of the telescope pointing straight to Polaris. And to do that, you will use basically your tripod, which you can move left and right. And that's for large adjustments. And on the wedge as well, if you've bought like the Skywatcher wedge, you'll have screws to uh, adjust the left and right position of the uh, telescope and the wedge much more precisely. So you can use that as well. And finally on the wedge, you'll ha also have an altitude adjustment and can use that to properly point the telescope towards uh, Polaris. There is something to note as well. This is not supported by ZWO. Still do it at your own risk. And especially if it like tilts over, well, that's not my fault. So yeah, be careful when you do so. Also something to note is that the telescope is a bit too smart for its own good and it refuses to point below the horizon. But when we use this little thing in equatorial mode, we will use a workaround and the telescope will think that, hey, this plane here that I am perpendicular to is the horizon. And so I will not point below it. Therefore, you will have access to only one part of your sky. I have access to the part of the sky up to roughly that angle towards the south, which means that I cannot point this telescope in equatorial mode to something like the Great Orion Nebula. And I'm hoping that one day ZW enhances their software so they can support equatorial mode fully, but it's not currently the case. So anyway, we're now all ready. We've set up the telescope so that it points at Polaris. It's parallel to the Earth's rotation axis. It's time to turn it on as always. So I'm just going to long press until I hear the beep. Now it's turned on and I will wait until I hear the voice telling me that the telescope is ready to connect before launching the app and connecting to the telescope as always. Okay, I am in the Seastar app and I have connected to the telescope as always. Now, when we are connected, there are a few things we want to make sure about. So I'm going to tap on the telescope image on the top right to access the telescope settings. And we're going to go to advanced feature. We want to make sure that this skip horizontal calibration option here is disabled. We want to make sure that it is disabled. And that's pretty much it. We are ready. 
What we're going to do next is I'm going to go to the stargazing mode and I'm going to use the joystick to point to some random part of the sky. So I'll, I'll point like the telescope, maybe like this direction manually using the joystick. So I will uh, rotate it and, you know, make sure that uh, we move it upwards and I'll see you once it's done. And we here we have the telescope pointing like roughly up. Don't really care. It can be a uh, kind of anywhere so I can move that. I just want to make sure that the telescope can see some stars. I have now turned off the light and we can see it see stars. I'm gonna press the red button and immediately it will tell me it's going to do horizon calibration. Let's wait for it to do so. Basically, it's gonna identify where it is pointed right now and then it will look at three other locations not too far away. And based on where it identified it was pointing, it will understand what angle it is currently tilted at and therefore it will recalibrate the horizon that it's aware of to be perpendicular to its base and you can see it is currently in progress with the second calibration point and soon the third calibration point okay so now that it's done it will actually try to find the object that it thinks you originally wanted it to point to just cancel Cancel, otherwise it's going to go point at some really weird direction. We don't want that to happen, but we're now ready. Now, if you have trouble with the horizontal calibration and you don't have enough sky to make it work, that kind of stuff, that can happen. There are workarounds uh, that I have used, tested and made work. You can basically tell the telescope that it's at the North Pole and then it doesn't need any horizontal calibration. If you want me to cover that in another video, please let me know. But anyway, now I can go to my Sky Atlas and we can search for any target that is within the scope of the horizon. So remember, Orion is off the table. So I'm going to search for the California Nebula, which I know is available uh, to the telescope. I'm going to center it and say like, OK, I want to uh, center this. This is good. I'm going to say go to. Finding object. And now the telescope will just find the object as usual. Nothing else to do. Object is centered. And here it is. It has found the object. And I can now actually image without issue. Obviously, I'm in Tokyo, so I'll have a lot of light pollution. But I can let it image like basically until the object is under the horizon. It's going to work. And that's basically it. That's all there is to it. Now I can take my exposures throughout the night until the battery runs out and we will not get any field rotation. So we don't have to crop and we can even take longer exposures of 20 seconds or 30 seconds, which are also available in the advanced settings that we had a look at earlier. So there are drawbacks, obviously. One, the horizon <laughs> doesn't let you image stuff like Orion, which is really a shame. Two, you are tilting the telescopes. You are mood putting like more stress onto the gears of the uh, the base, the, the gears that normally rotate horizontally, and they're not designed to do that. This could be problematic. I think overall it's fine, but it's something to keep in mind. And this is a try at your own risk type of maneuver. Also, you need to be careful about your whole tripod not tipping over. You want to make sure you have a solid tripod, and ideally, you would you want to have one of the legs pointing towards the celestial pole together with the telescope to reduce the risk of it tipping over. And of course, all of this is not supported by ZW. And I hope that in the future it is, but it does make imaging more complex. So it's probably not what ZW really wants to do because the whole thing about a smart telescope, it's something that you can just plop down, super easy to use, and you don't need to think about. This kind of thing kind of goes against that. But it lets us geeks, like you or I, try to push the telescope to its limits and, you know, to, to push the envelope, to use it in use cases that it wasn't designed for. And it's a lot of fun. And, you know, let's just have fun. Now, I have tested this mode actually quite extensively. I used it on the Bode and Cigar Galaxies and it imaged until the battery ran out for three hours effectively. And it had no field rotation whatsoever. It was amazing. I loved having that polar alignment. So it works absolutely great. If you want to try it out, all of the links to the equipment you need are in the description.
And while you're going to the description, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, in which case, welcome. Leave a comment, it truly helps the channel out. And if you're feeling truly generous, you can join the channel as a Patreon, link in the description, or as a member, it truly helps the channel out. But more important than all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.